Hello everybody, how are you today? I hope you're all having an amazing day. I thought to start a small new series from Free Code Camp and it will be about the CSS Flexbox. So as you can see, I have already logged in into my code in FreeCodeCamp and I have opened the CSS Flexbox course. I know some things of Flexbox and I have used it in some of my projects, but I've never took uh, this lesson from FreeCodeCamp. I think it's quite new, so there are maybe there are not many people who have taken this course and maybe some of you that are currently taking it um, are having some questions or can find some answers. So I hope that by this series I will help you, I will help you to find these answers you are looking for. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments. I think that without further ado, we can start. And the first one that I'm going to show you is use display flex to position two boxes. Alrighty. So CSS flex box, this section uses alternating challenge styles to show how to use CSS to position elements in a flexible way. First, the challenge will explain theory. Then a practical challenge using a simple tweet component will apply the Flexbox concept. So far so good. Placing the CSS property display flex on an element allows you to use other flex properties to build a responsive page. Add the CSS property display to box container and set its value to flex. All right, the first one, I think it's quite simple. So I'm just going to copy and paste the, the display property and give it a flex, just run the tests. Okay, we have this part here, a tick box here. So let's just submit it and go to the next challenge. I don't think that I have a lot of things to explain here. Let's go to the next one and I can see the Quincy Larson tweet. Um, first, let's read on the left the description. To the right is the tweet embedded that will be used as the practical example. Some of the elements would look better with a different layout. The last challenge demonstrated display flex. Here you'll add it to several components in the tweet embedded to start ad adjusting their positioning. Alrighty. Add the CSS property display flex to all the following items. Note that the selectors are already set up in the CSS. So I guess that you have to add the um, display flex in these classes like header, profile name and etc. So I'm just going to copy and then paste the display flex and let's start from header, then profile name. Okay, it has this empty spaces here. So it's quite easy for me to understand where should I have these properties. And maybe this is the last one. Okay, let's just run the tests and see if we are correct. And again, we are correct. Nice. Just submit or control and enter. I'm going to be using, I guess, control and enter as it is quite faster. So let's get to the third one. It's use the flex direction property to make a row. Yes, because so far we have just columns. So yeah, adding display flex to an element turns it into a flex container. This makes it possible to align any children of that element into rows or columns. You do this by adding the flex direction property to the parent item and setting it to row or column. Creating a row will align the children horizontally and creating column will align the children vertically nice other options for flex direction are row reverse and column reverse note the default value for the flex direction property is row all right so let's see what we have to do we can take the flex direction we will add it in the box container element and give it a value of row reserve okay so far i don't think that this is very difficult but nevertheless, it's something helpful, it's free of course, and at the same time you'll learn. Great, I mean. <laughs> okay, that one was also correct, so let's continue to the fourth one. 
Uh, okay, maybe later. Sorry for that. <laughs> Apply the flex direction property to create rows in the tweet emptied. Okay, so now we have the practice. I'm going to take the flex direction. Okay, and I have to take it in the header and footer and set the value to row. Okay, just here. And I'm going to add the row. And I will do the same, I guess, in the footer. Okay, and I'm going to run the tests. And let's see the results. Okay, there is where correct. <laughs> let's continue with use the flex direction property to make a column. The last the challenges use the flex direction property set to row. This property can also create a column by vertically staking the children of a flex container. So what we have to do is to take the flex direction and um, give it to the box container and then give it a value of column. Okay, flex direction, box container and then I guess column will do the trick. Alrighty, and I think that in the right part we can see the column. Nice. Let's do one more. The tweet emptied header and footer use the flex direction property earlier with a row value. Similarly, the items inside the profile name element would work well stuck as a column. Add the CSS property flex direction to the header's profile name element and set the value to column. So we will go to the profile name. Let me find it. Oh, come on, where is it? Oh, here. And we will have the flex direction. And this time we will also set him to column. Okay. I think that um, we are done with this section and I don't want these videos to get too long. So I'm going to stop here. But if you did like it, please share and subscribe. And I will meet you in the next video where I will be continuing from the point that I have stopped here. Have an amazing day and see you in the next one. Bye!